Hey guys, MD Prepper here. Another review. This time of the Paratrax Bowie knife from Bud K. Uh, I believe this is a Bud K exclusive type knife. Uh, at least uh, that's what it says here on the blade. Uh, Bud K style steel markings, all of that. Um, first of all, I would not describe this as a Bowie knife. Uh, it's a big, well, mid size survival style knife. Uh, very cool, lots of options, all that sort of thing. I don't call this a Bowie. Uh, doesn't have a Bowie blade, so not a Bowie. Uh, we'll talk about the sheath here in a minute. Get that the heck out of the way. Now, stats on this bad boy. Uh, it is stainless steel. Appears to be what I believe is 440 stainless. Um, I don't know that for a fact. It's not listed. Just uh, sharpening this thing up. Uh, that seems to be about the quality that it is. I uh, have to say this thing does come uh, quite dull on the blade. Um, might be okay for machete type task, but uh, this thing's too short for your standard machete stroke. Uh, you're not going to get the uh, good swing you are on a longer blade. Uh, I did sharpen this up very easily, which is one of your little part, uh, pocket sharpeners, hand sharpeners, all that along this blade here. Uh, sharpened up very, very well. Very nice. Uh, here's some stats on this thing. I paid $16.99 from Bud K for this. Uh, apparently they used to be as cheap as $10 a piece back in the day from the comments. It is uh, 13 and a quarter inches over long, overall length rather. Um, the uh, blade itself is 7 and 1 8 inches long uh, to there. Uh, it does come with this little buttstock knife, if you will, held in by tension only. There she is. She's wrapped in a little bit of nylon cord. That's not actual paracord. Um, let me talk about this little knife first to get out of the way. It is only beveled and sharpened on this one side. Uh, other side's flat. Uh, I don't see a lot of purpose, purposes for this knife. Um, I've sharpened up a little bit on the one edge, but uh, can't see this as much of a knife. I'd rather have a little pocket fold or something like that. Uh, might actually take the uh, quarters off of this and wrap it around the blade for something else. Uh, again, it uh, secures here in the base. Just on friction, from what I've heard, I'm not experienced this yet myself with chopping, but uh, this thing will fly out if you're doing too much chopping. So, not so sure I like that a whole lot. It, it's okay. I'm going to put it here to the side. Now, blade itself, um, you got your uh, chopping edges. You've got your cutting edge. Uh, the chopping edge here up front, uh, you can use kind of like a kukri. Uh, it's a lot shorter, smaller than a kukri, so it uh, doesn't have quite the arc that you're going to get and want for uh, heavy duty chopping, big stuff, but uh, it'll get the job done. Now, down here is your standard cutting style, style edge. Um, back side of this blade here is flat, uh, so you could baton a very small amount with this right here. Uh, I could see batoning with this okay. have not batoned with it yet. And now you also have this saw back edge here. Now, uh, this is not the finest saw back edge. Um, a lot of people will say this looks like a Ken Brown tracker. I'd say it's inspired by Ken Brown Tracker, but uh, not entirely meant to be the same thing. Uh, the saw edge, you got double edge teeth on it, if you can see there. Uh, only thing I don't like about this, they are squared type edges on it. You can see that right there. Uh, every type of saw blade I like, or a saw, has got some uh, tooth edges to it. This would work okay, but it's going to be kind of hard to get that initial bite to saw with. Uh, it'll get the job done. Um, it's kind of thick here on the back. You could sharpen that if you wanted to, but I really don't see a purpose with it being uh, this far inside the back side of the blade. Uh, this is more for batoning and that sort of thing. Uh, this blade is considered full tang. See it right there and there. Uh, not so sure if I would really consider it 100% full tang uh, because the back side here, if you can see it in there, uh, there's a cutout on the back side of this. The blade apparently runs to here and runs to here, arcs back in a little bit on both sides, then just stops. Uh, doesn't appear to run back inside from what I can tell from my magnets, that sort of thing. I may be wrong. Uh, again, trying to look down this thing with a, a flashlight, it's hard to tell. Um, what I would say the full tang capacity comes down to here with my magnet. Uh, then it splits up into two little arms that uh, loop back around. Honestly, I would say this would be a better blade without this little mini blade in the uh, grip here. I would just say make it a full tang grip all the way and be done with it and it'll be a fine blade. Uh, don't have any major problems with it but uh, would not consider this one of my primary 
carry blades. I think it's fun out in the woods. Uh, it's neat. It's different. Uh, you're the only one who's going to have one. Use it a bit. It's not a cold seal pushman by any means, but uh, it's neat. Uh, I believe from what I've read in the comments, this thing uh, might have made an appearance in a movie. The Hunted, possibly. Not a big movie goer type guy. Uh, grips are wood. They're just a very basic wood. Not the highest quality in my opinion. They're okay. They'll probably get the job done. But from uh, what I've seen from a few of the comments on Bud K, these grips may come apart on you just because of the quality. Uh, the varnish and finish is not 100% complete. You can see that there's some uh, streaks in the finish there where it did not uh, fully get varnished. Uh, it's fine. It's functional. Now, you got your little cutout here, which I like. I like that little cutout. That's not a bad thing in the wood. Uh, gives you a better purchase grip on the blade. This thing handles amazingly well. Uh, for defensive use, chopping, that sort of thing. It feels very good in the hand, uh, very natural. Uh, this is just a basic cheap nylon cordage set up close. It uh, appears to be attached. Don't think you see it under there. Just uh, melt it on with uh, some heat and all that to uh, weld the thing together, keep it together. Uh, I'm going to use this thing for a while longer, may post another video on it. Uh, I expect this to come off at some point. I would probably wrap it with real paracord, something like that. Uh, what I might do, I may uh, refinish the grips. I may make some different grips. Or, what I think would be probably better with this is to uh, put more of your uh, Rhino Liner type uh, bedding coating, plasticized type coat uh, around this thing at some point. Uh, so, if I decide to take the grips off, if I don't like these grips, I may... Uh, sort of quasi-plasticize them and see if I like it. I think it would be quite good with that. Take this off, put some uh, rubberized uh, insides there. I think this would work real well. Personal opinion on this blade. Uh, overall, for $16.99, it is not a bad blade at all. Uh, I can think of a lot better blades for a little more expensive, but man, this thing is cool looking. Uh, it's just different. Uh, again, I can think of better things. But uh, for the price, a decent addition. Now, the sheath. Uh, standard type nylon sheath, uh, relatively lightweight, just has your standard belt hole loop there. That's about it. Uh, you've got your uh, upper clasp here, which I really think is frankly useless on this blade the way it secures. Uh, let me secure it for you here in a second. You slide it in here like a, a longer blade. You've got three snaps. Hey, come on now. Here I am on video looking bad. There you have it. Uh, snaps open real quick. Pulls out real easy. Uh, works fine. The only thing I don't like about this, I think this sheath is backwards. I think this thing should be mirror imaged. With a blade in here like this, let me just snap it up real quick. Uh, we're not going to use the uh, upper clasp. It holds in just fine unless you pull it out real hard. This thing is not going to come out of the sheath. And you could pull it out real hard if you needed to without that clasp. Uh, around the uh, upper grip. I uh, think that's a better way to carry it. Only problem, if you carry this on your right hip, it's backwards. Um, this blade is not going to come up the right way. It's going to come up backwards on you. Uh, you're going to need to flip the blade around. If you carry it on your off hand and you pull it up with your right hand off your offside grip, it's probably going to be fine. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if this was designed for offhand carry. Uh, that's probably the only way I would carry it if I was going to carry it, carry something else on my strong side. Um, just the way the sheath is built. built. Uh, don't know if that was by intention or by mistake. It's, it's not a huge grip, gripe about it, but uh, I'd prefer it to be a right hand strong side carry being right handed myself. Uh, anyway, this is the Paratrax Bowie knife. Again, not exactly a Bowie knife. A uh, bit of a clone of the uh, Ken Brown Tracker. little Knife in the bottom looks kind of cool. Not really all that useful, in my opinion. Um, I've got a pocket knife that's going to do better than that. But uh, anyway, a neat style blade. Not a bad pickup for $17. Very unique to add to your collection. Uh, again, I think it's 440 steel. Uh, need to sharpen up the blade a little bit. Took about 5-10 minutes to sharpen up. Did real well. Alright guys, ND Prepper on the Paratrax Bowie. Thanks. Out.